Bitcoin, you hear this term all the time. It's actually a cryptocurrency. Most of you know that already. But it's interesting because Bitcoin is kind of, it's one of those terms that's enveloping the the medium. So it's like uh, thermos or Kleenex where you have a specific product that people are referring to when they refer to the the branch of products it represents. So Bitcoin is an example of cryptocurrency, but it's become one of those terms. And good starting point, let's just talk about value itself. You know, it, it, there's many different things you could value, whether it's tulips back in the 1600s or casino chips at a casino. So first form of currency we're going to talk about is, um, well, it's it's the one that's 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 been around for a long time it's 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 stood the test of time you have your precious metals things like gold and silver and it's a pretty stable form of currency and you know the egyptians trusted it uh one of the big problems with it though is that it's not very easy to lug around i mean you don't want to carry you know pieces of gold with you and that's why we have things like fiat currency which is government issued currency now, there's problems with fiat as well. Uh, I mean, would you trust a a a, uh, uh, a bill that has Saddam Hussein on it? Now, this is where cryptocurrency comes in, where you're not really relying on anyone. It's a very decentralized form of currency. A lot of people actually refer to it as digital gold, and it actually has more in common with gold than it does with fiat currency. All right, so which one do you go with? Well, that's up to you. I mean, in theory, you could go invest in all three. Now, this video is about Bitcoin, so let's break it down. So it's all based on this idea of a blockchain. It's a digital public ledger, which is basically a list of transactions, all right, that are timestamped and locked in and can't be changed. And they figured out ways to make the whole system work in a relatively stable and secure way. And it, it's actually, it, it gets very complicated when you look at the actual nuts and bolts of it. But at the end of the day, at the very forefront of the blockchain, you have miners, okay? And the miners are the people who are calculating every transaction that happens, all right? And why do they do this? Because if they successfully, quote unquote, mine a transaction, then they are rewarded with a certain amount of bitcoins right now it's something like 12.5 bitcoins all right and every single bitcoin that's ever been created was because of a miner mining it but the big thing i want to make clear here the reason why people are so into bitcoin is because it gets rid of banks and governments and it allows people to exchange currency exchange value rather without having to rely on any sort of middleman now bitcoin wasn't the first attempt at making quote unquote digital money. All right, there was ones before it, but it was just sort of the one that took off. No one actually knows who created Bitcoin. We do know that it was very much connected with the bailout of the banks back in, in you know, 2008, 2009. Because the very first block on the blockchain of Bitcoin has a uh, reference to that bailout. Like I said before, there's all kinds of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin being one. There's actually forks, quote unquote, of Bitcoin where the blockchain actually splits. So you have things like Bitcoin Cash and there's Litecoin, which is kind of like silver to Bitcoin's gold. You have Ethereum, which is it's a lot more than just a currency system, but it uses that same blockchain idea. You have uh, Ripple, which is basically the bank's reaction to Bitcoin. It's kind of like the bank's version of a cryptocurrency. You have Monero, which is focused on privacy. You have uh, Zcash, focused on security. Dash, focused on anonymity. And then there's also stable coins that are actually tied to fiat currency like the US dollar. And that's, you know, cryptocurrencies like Tether or the upcoming Libra which is interesting. And Libra is actually coming from Facebook, but there's a lot of controversy with Facebook in general, and they have various reasons for doing it. 
Um, one of the big ones is there's a lot of people who don't have access to a bank in the world in places like India, and they want to capitalize on that. So, um, so, so we'll see. Now, lots of negatives, as I mentioned before, with cryptocurrency. A lot of criminals use it for illegal transactions, and it's a very volatile system. So it's going up, it's going down. Who knows if you should invest in it at all? Um, it's one of those things. Um, another downside is the overall energy consumption of mining. It's actually using a ton of energy. And it's while the system itself is secure, the ways that you get into that system have flaws. And with with quantum computing, I'm actually um, I'm curious to see what will happen with the, the blockchain itself and how secure it will be in the future. So if you want to get a Bitcoin, there's two ways you can get one. You can go to an exchange or you can mine one. Now, if you're going to go to exchange, you can use something like Coinbase. BISC is another one, B-I-S-Q. And um, if you're going to mine, it's a lot more involved. You're going to need some kind of of, of powerful gaming PC, but more likely you're going to need something like an ASICs machine or a warehouse. I mean, you're going to be competing with people all over the world who are trying to mine that next Bitcoin transaction. A lot of people get into mining pools and kind of combine resources to try and win those Bitcoins. Um, but regardless, when you get the Bitcoins, you want to put it in some sort of wallet. So uh, uh, there's two kinds of wallets. You can put them in a hot wallet where it's 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 stored online somewhere basically you have a private key that you're storing and there's also cold wallets and that's where it's stored offline i would recommend a cold wallet uh you could actually print out your private key code and and store it in a safe that, that's probably your best bet all right so i i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that you learned something and are you going to invest that's the question while you're thinking about that, you enjoy your day. Have a good one.